do we have some Gotham fans here? Now it's we're talking. All right, without further ado, David Mazous and Cameron Bikendova. So you guys got, got a packed house in Rhode Island. This is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, hey, here's for you guys. Here we go. So how's the con treating you? You having fun? The what? The con. Oh, it's great. Mm. I loved it. I haven't been here for too long, but everybody's super nice, and it's always great to come to cons because you get to meet the people who actually sit down and watch you on their TVs. It's weird, and it's great. <laughs> I wonder, is there anybody here that you guys really wanted to meet? Yeah. Who? Justin Roiland. Oh, he's doing a panel right there, right no, now. No, he's not. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he's I'm freaking fan. out. I love Rick and Morty. It's my favorite show. Um, I didn't, I didn't know who all was going to be here, but I was at the table, and one of the things that the guy had me sign was um, like a, like a, those little bobblehead things, the pop. Yeah, it was a book of that. Or maybe, no, it was, I don't remember what it was. But I saw that Kaylin McLaughlin. McLaughlin, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that he's here. And we became friends through social media. So I was like, I have to meet Caleb. I have to meet Caleb. So I met him. <laughs> That's great. Uh, we he's have, really cool. If anybody has questions, find the two girls in the red. Yeah. Um, so this season is fantastic, guys. This is like it was going fast before, and now it's just ramped up to eleven. Yeah. What yeah. can we say? It's upcoming. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but but yeah. Um. <laughs> there, good answer. Yeah. Say, <laughs> There's nothing we can say really without spoiling it. Here, okay, this is a big spoiler, guys, so just hold your hats. Bruce becomes Batman. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. I'm sorry, I ruined the whole show for most of you. So you can look forward to that. Yeah. Selena wears a lot of leather, too, so I mean, that's one thing. But... Yeah. <laughs> Let's get some questions. Robin? Robin's like probably three months old. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be so cool if there's like a baby Robin. <laughs> right? I know, I completely agree. <laughs> you know what? She would have to get paid good money to do that, though. She cannot. I'm would she be a good babysitter? No! No! I would not trust Selena Kyle with my kid. Excuse me? I'm sorry. I mean, she'd take care she'd, of the kid. No, she'd be she... teaching my kid how to like, get in a knife fight. No. <laughs> It would be it would be a defense class. Yeah. It would be a defense class, and she would just set up a little crib with some cardboard boxes and blankets, and be like, "Here's some milk. You gotta figure it out on, on your own." And oh god, we'll actually see how that goes this season. Question number here. Hi. So you guys are hysterical for one together, but is there any villain or any other character that you wish you had more interaction with on the show? Yes. <laughs> Care to elaborate? No. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course I do. Um, the Riddler. I've had one scene with a guy, four years, and it was through like a glass window. I want to have more scenes with Corey, because like, he's such a great guy too. I love working with him. Yeah, Enigma. I have a question over here. Okay, uh, this is for David. Um, my wife and I are raising three autistic children, and I was a big fan of yours in Touch. Thank you. And I just wanted to know, how did you go about uh, getting into the role? Like, what, what process did you use to develop the character of Jake? Um, so I did, but before we shot the pilot, I did um, a two-week kind of intensive with, they, they hired on a specialist who, um, a woman who works with autistic children, um, and the director, and so I did a kind of an intensive with them for two weeks, and they taught me how to walk. You know, I don't know if anybody's seen the show, Jake used to always walk with his arms stiff um, at his sides. Look, look funny when you ran, because you ran like, like a penguin, like waddling. But um, also, I always had 
on my shirts where there was like a hole for the thumb in the shirt here and I always had a marble um, in there so there's like certain things that I picked up during that and um, and they were like whichever whatever you think will help you um, with that character and that's kind of what I what I did I never actually had I also watched when I was auditioning I watched a bunch of videos of um, autistic children I never actually had any direct contact with them I probably would have been too young because I was 10 when I booked that show um, but um, but yeah that's that's how I did it Great question, thank you. Another one over here. Hey. Hi. I've got a question for both of you. Uh, we're starting to see more of the Batman costume come into play uh, for Bruce this season. I was just wondering when we're gonna see more of the iconic bits of some of these suits. Are they coming up? Are you excited for that? You know, like we saw, um, I wanted to say Catwoman's ears on the lady who broke the Riddler out of the ice earlier this season. It looked exactly like Catwoman's like little headpiece. So I thought, oh, there it is. And we haven't seen Bruce's, uh, the, the bat head yet. I was just wondering if those were coming down the pipeline. Are you excited for that or? I'm excited for that, definitely. Um, we, I feel like I'm talking really loud. Um, I forget that the microphones expand the sound so I don't have to yell. Um, so, we got a little bit of a sneak peek as far as Selena's wardrobe goes. Um, each, I've actually had about five costumes already throughout the season, which is a lot for me. Season one, I only had one costume, which they rarely washed, so I was stank oh on set. <laughs> it was great. Um, but there's actually a, a fantasy thing that happens at some point in the season where you see a little bit more of a glimpse into Catwoman. No, another one down here at the front. That's Riddle me this. <laughs> oh, that was good. What character from the comics would you like to see the most appear in the show? I want Harley Quinn. Yeah. Too, soon. Too soon? Why? There's the I agree, sir. ideology of the Joker, though. I mean, Jerome could have a side piece, and she could be the Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm not lying. I see that, but I'm 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 with you, sir. I I think that <laughs> I think that Harley Quinn can only come about from the Joker, or else she's not a proper Harley no, Quinn. No, she can be crazy. No, but then it's not Harley Quinn. Then it's just a crazy lady in weird makeup. <laughs> No, to be Harley Quinn, you need to be a therapist at Arkham, and the Joker has to create Harley Quinn, or else no, it's not Harley Quinn. No, she's already Harley Quinn without Joker, though. She is great without Joker, but her origins have to be from the Joker. The Joker has to create Harley Quinn, and it has to be the Joker. It can't be somebody who we think might be the Joker. Thank you. Okay. You win this one. Watch out, like, the next script I get, there's going to be Harley Quinn, yeah. and I'm going to be like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cameron's going to call me and be like, told you. No, I'm not even going to say that. I'm just going to be like... <laughs> and then you're going to be like... Yeah, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I actually have a, uh, a question for you um, yeah. about the movie you did with Kevin Bacon where you were possessed by evil Indian stones. Yeah. And by the way, did you guys know that in the newest issue of Batman, Batman and Catwoman got engaged? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hope she says no. No, she said... <laughs> no, she said yes. She said yes? Yeah, they're engaged. Damn it. Spoiler for anybody who hasn't read it. Appreciate that, Cameron. <laughs> But, uh, no, their relationship is awful. You have to agree. Please talk about your movie with Kevin Bacon we cool. that you did, the uh, Stones movie. <laughs> um, my relationship with Kevin Bacon? Yeah, you did the movie last Yeah, time. yeah, he's, he's a great guy. I learned so much working with him. Um, the movie, we only took about a month to shoot, so um, I wasn't with him for a super long period of time, but he actually, when, I, when we finished that movie, he was still shooting uh, the following on the same studio as us, on Steiner Studios in Brooklyn. So um, every once in a while, I'd run into him. It would be really cool. But he's, um, I, still, I still keep in touch with him. He's, um, he's a great, I mean, obviously, he's a great actor and um, really amazing guy. Um, dude. <laughs> D -O -O -D. I have to think about that. Um, I have a terrible, terrible, terrible long-term memory. And we shot that movie 
like three years ago now. So I, if, if I saw the movie again, I'd be like, oh, remember that. But I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed in you. That one way in the back over there. Okay. First, you two make a very charming couple. And second, can we expect more Bruce and Selena interaction this season? You want to take this one or you want me to? I'll go. Um, Bruce has some shenanigans going on. And Selena is trying to get her stuff together. So they've gone part ways for majority of the season so far. At some point, they reconnect, and it's pretty cool. The thing, though, is that they, they do, they do kind of, they're, they're kind of both, really? <laughs> it's still ringing. <laughs> okay, you know, you know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know who you are. How disrespectful. All right, what was I saying? I'm kidding. I do that in the movies all the time. It's like, it's really no big deal. I talk in the movies. <laughs> you were talking in the movies? You're that guy? Yeah. I'm like, really, bro? Really? <laughs> it's God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wait, wait, wait I, I, was, I was finishing a thought. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just passing it to you. Oh, um, oh, right, right, that, that's what it was, right. So yeah, so they go, they go separate ways, and they're both kind of dealing with their own thing, but the really cool thing about their relationship is that whenever they do come back together for uh, just a scene or two, there's all, like, Selena is always has that special thing with Bruce that she's, like, the only one that can kind of get to him in a certain way, and I think vice versa as well, so... Mm. Um, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Selena's really the only person who can put Bruce in his place. And I think that's really cool. And then Bruce is always one to call out Selena for things that I think are unfair. However, most of the time he has a point. Every time they get in an argument, they both leave the argument heated, yeah. but also, like, actually... Yeah, maybe she's right. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm tired of I'm tired of being treated like I'm nothing. Tabitha, I need your help. <laughs> I'm trying to hear what's going on. I think there's a clogged toilet somewhere. <laughs> what did you do to me? I'm sorry. I had tacos last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. This is a question for Carmen. Hi. Hi. You're so sweet. How do you get your really bad side on with um, Jessica Lucas and Aaron Richards? Because <laughs> they're oh pretty God. bad. Thank you. Um, I don't think my voice is so loud. I don't even need the microphone. Um, honestly, it's an alter ego thing, I think. For me, I, I don't know if you agree, but I think it's easier to play the opposite of what you are. Mm. Um, like, because acting is all about vulnerability and how much you, how vulnerable you really are. Because a good actor, in my opinion, doesn't just pretend that he or she is somebody or some is at some place. It's actually being that person. So for me, I think there's always a little bit of um, the pers the actor and the character, but as a person who is not the vulnerable type, because I don't have to play somebody who's more like me, I find it a little easier and more fun to play Selena because I'm actually getting to be someone who I'm not normally in my daily life, if that makes sense. It's one in the middle right here. First off, I love both of you so much. Thank you. Hi. 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 Oh, I, I don't want to block the view from people behind me. Um, so you guys are doing an awesome job of, of growing into your characters that we know so well. Um, which Batman and which Catwoman do you kind of have an idea of who you're growing into? That's 
question. For me, it's been Christian Bale since the beginning. Um, no, not Kevin Conroy, sadly. I, mean, I love Kevin Conroy, but um, it just, it's been Christian Bale. Um, and I think that's because that, Christian Bale was really my first um, interaction with Batman, was like going to the movies when I was like eight um, and seeing uh, Dark Knight Rises, which is a really scary movie for an eight-year-old. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but um, but I mean I've always loved Batman since I saw that movie, and he was you know he was the Batman. That was the first time that I had seen Batman, and it was it was him, it was Christian Bale. So um, and also when we started the show is before Ben Affleck started his his thing. So um, that's kind of who I had in mind because that was that's my Batman. Sorry, I ran out of popcorn, so I got distracted. <laughs> um. I've never had an idea of who I wanted to be from the beginning because um, initially when I auditioned, I didn't know that I was auditioning for Selena Kyle. I was just auditioning as this orphan girl who was really fierce. So going into it during the pilot, I didn't have an idea of which Catwoman I liked the best because I was just going based off of the scripts. Even now, I don't really have an idea because each cat, well, each actor played her in a different way. So I'd, I'd think that Selena would be like a Cameron version of a mutant six different actors <laughs> together. Yeah, just like all in one. Just like mix it all together and know you get the best of both worlds. You know what I mean? <laughs> Only the young kids will get that. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, one over here. Hi. Um, love the show. Nice costume. Thank you. <laughs> oh yes, you bad eye. I know. I wore it to uh, the Boston Comic Con, and I was like the. I was there was a couple of people there, and I was. We found each other. It was great. Yes. Um, so I'm really happy to be with all these Gotham people. Um, my question is, taking on such iconic roles that have been played by so many people, I just wondered if you guys dealt with any sort of pressure when you started taking on these roles, and if you did, how you dealt with it. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I felt, I think I was like too young to really realize. I was 12 when I booked Gotham. Um, I think I was too young to really realize what exactly I was stepping into. I don't, I don't think it really, I thought I was just going to be like another job, um, any other TV show. But it's not at all. There are... 75 year at that point, 75 years of, of a built-in fan base. And there were certain expectations that come with playing such an iconic character that people have loved for the past 75 years, almost century. Um, and I, I don't think I really realized that. I think I, I, once, I, once I did realize it was probably the first time we went to Comic-Con when all these people were really excited to see us and the show hadn't even aired yet. And I was like, you guys probably might not even like it. Um, <laughs> uh, all you've seen is like a two-minute trailer. Um, but, uh, but I mean, that, that's kind of when it hit for me. But I think at that point, we'd already started the show. I'd already established my character. And um, yeah, so it was kind of too late. And I was like, all right, well, it's in the wind now. So. Um, yeah. I'll, I mean, for me, most of the pressure came from myself. Because I was coming from the dance world. And there were a lot of people who were questioning whether I would be able to actually do the character because I was a dancer, not an, not an actor. So most of the pressure was actually coming from myself. But similar to David, it was like I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> First off, I want to say I love you guys so much. Um, Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, so my question was for David. How fun was it to film the billionaire brat scene and the party Bruce scene? <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> oh my god. That's like a teenage boy's dream. Yeah. Scene. The first, the first, yeah. Well, that one was the the first one. The billionaire w w with um, Aaron and Robin um, was so much fun. Half of those lines were improv with me and Robin. Um, like before, we had like a two-second, you know, interaction in the in the script, and then um, our director Mark, who's one of the best directors yeah. um, on our show, he he was like, 
just, just do it. He's British, and I was like, all right, I got you, fam. I um, got you, fam. I got you. And I just, I, just, like, I just went for it, and then I, went, I was like, that's too much, right? And he was like, no, more. Um, and so I just had so much fun with that. And then the, the party montage was the most fun thing I've ever shot, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> Um, that made, they, they, they literally put me on top of the bar with like alcoholless champagne, like tons and tons of bottles, like bartenders just passing me bottles, and there were, all, the, all the extras had agreed to get wet. And so I was a lot of poor champagne on anybody. And, I, and so I just took, I just took like these champagne, and I just started pouring them on people, I was like chugging them. Um, <laughs> is it really, is it ginger ale? No, that day it was alcoholless champagne. Every, every day it's different. Wait, really? Yeah, it tasted like champagne. Oh. Which is good, I guess. <laughs> All the way in the back. They said it was alcoholless. But I had a really fun time that day. <laughs> yeah, I questioned whether it was really Yeah, I have to ask Travis about that. Yeah, Travis probably... Yeah, Travis screwed me that. Yeah. He, uh, he, yeah. I call him Travi. He's the homie. All right. This one is for Mr. Bruce Wayne up there. Well, since the first episode, we saw you as a young, scared child who just became an orphan. Now, you're a confident young man and also a playboy. So how does it feel when you have to go from being completely serious to, I'm going to fight crime to, eh, screw it, I'm just going to go party all night? <laughs> um, it's so much fun, but that, that really is what the character is. That's, that's what Bruce Wayne is, and that, that's why I love the role so much. People ask me, like, what's your favorite part about playing Bruce Wayne? It's, it's, I mean, obviously it's great that he's such an iconic character. That's fun too. But the thing that I love the most is how complex he is and how many different phases and levels he has to him. He, he does have this darkness inside of him. And, and the thing about it is, um, you know, he, right now he's going through this party boy, playboy kind of phase, but it comes out of a place of really serious anger and depression. Um, and, that, that's, that's something that I love, that this, this character is so, he's so flawed in so many different ways, but he's also so, so much braver than I ever will be. Um, and I, that, that's, I just love, I love playing Bruce because he's, he is this very dynamic person. Have you Thank learned you from playing Bruce? Like, yeah. Do you incorporate things in your life? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, the past four years, 12 to 16, these are very formative years in anybody's life. Yeah. And being surrounded by, you know, these, these values um, and these, these morals that Bruce has, of course, will, yeah, they, they've definitely um, affected me and um, influenced my, my decisions. Same. We have another one uh, right up front. Uh, do, do I stand up? Okay, stand up. Um, so, have you, uh, it's for both of you, um, oh, bye, um, <laughs> oh no. She's um, like, nah. I really need this popcorn. Okay, uh, there we go. Um, so have you guys, oh, it's fine, um, have you guys, uh, watched yourselves, um, in the, like, first couple of seasons, and what's it like to see, like, tiny you, prepubescent you? <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> it's like, watching myself from seasons one and two is equivalent to having your significant other over and your parents showing them your baby pictures. <laughs> it is awful. I hate it. I, I hate it. I hate it. But it's cool. But, but I love it. I love it at the same time, but I hate it. I just love hate relationship. What do you think? I don't feel as strongly. <laughs> um, <laughs> just like, okay. Um, it's, 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 the thing that gets me the most is my voice. Because I really used to like be up here. Yeah, your like, voice dropped. Bro. I was like, Mickey Mouse. I can't, I can't do it now. I'm still, go, I'm still going through changes. I can't sing. Until I'm done through puberty. You never have been able to, though. <laughs> Breaking it to you. I, I was better when I was like that. Mm. You know what? <laughs> Sorry. Nice I've push. never been able to sing either, so. Way in the back. No, you don't get a fist. Will the scarecrow hmm. return in season four? What? 
Where are you? Where are you and what did you say? Oh, hey! Oh, you're Scarecrow, that's why. I was just wondering if the Scarecrow will return in season four. I heard season four. Oh, uh, we're Scarecrow. Here, he didn't die. I know, I know yeah, he's coming die, back. But I was just, we haven't seen him since episode two, so I was just wondering if he was coming back. Yeah, he's coming back. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's also Gotham. If you die, it's not really the end of the road for you. <laughs> but, yeah. You can get shot in the I think half of our head. cast has died at this point. <laughs> no. It's true. It's true. Oh, hey, Wonder Woman. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's like, I want chicken. <laughs> uh, we have a question on the right over here. Hi. Um, <clears throat> how, okay, given that Batman and Catwoman are such iconic characters in the DC Comics universe, how, if you have, how have you made them more your own character inflected who you are within the character? You go first. <laughs> um, well, a lot of it has to do with the writing, which I have nothing to do with. Our writer's team is amazing. Um, but... You could disagree. I mean, you are sitting here. Something's good about it. No hard feelings. Um, I guess. What? Why'd you scoot away? I don't know. You're scary. <laughs> um. So. I'd say, yeah, for me, it's just the writing. It's just trusting my stuff. Whoa, that popcorn almost flew out of my mouth. Um, trusting trusting the, the writing and trusting myself and my instincts. Because a lot of the times when you question yourself in anything, but when you question yourself, that's when the character kind of goes awry. So I just have to remind myself to that I know the character like the inside. People say the back of your hand, but your back of your hand doesn't look like anything, so I'm going to say the palm of my hand. Um, so yeah, I just say I trust myself and the writers. Yeah. Um, I, would, uh, I would definitely agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, feel like, I feel like with every kind of decision... <laughs> I think she wants your popcorn. Yeah. You can have that, but don't eat the rest of it. I need that. Um, yeah, I think, um, just to answer your question quickly, um, I think, like, just the way it's, like Cameron said, it's 98% it's the writing. Um, the other 1%, one other, other one, yeah, 1% is past incarnations, and I think the other 1% is um, just whenever Bruce makes a decision, whenever some, I would just consider what I would do, I guess, but, you know, oftentimes Bruce, like I said, isn't me, so um, oftentimes he would do something different than I would. Another one way in the back over there. Was it really sad to kill Alfred? <laughs> He's Alfred. It was. I was like, Bruce, you're a jerk. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, it was like a fake, a fake knife. Actually, it was just. It was really hot because, like, the set was really hot that day, and the, they, the knife that they gave me was really heavy. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, it was. How long did it take to shoot that scene? Too long. Because the thing was, it was. It was like a continuous scene. Because the end of the last ep end of one episode and the beginning of the other one was like one scene, oh. um, and so we had like it was like basically they shot it as one big scene with two different directors. Oh, so it was very complicated, and I was not in a particularly good mood. Um, what happened? I, I remember I was screaming at somebody that day, which doesn't happen often, but I feel like they had something happen. I forgot yeah, what it was. I, I was in, I was in a bad mood that day. Uh, we only had time for a couple more questions. One here. Sorry. <laughs> no. I forgot what it was. I remember my. Hi. Hi. Um, 
I wanted to know what your best memory on set was. Oh. I, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is free food. <laughs> um, Un unlimited free food. Yeah. There are, a lot, there are so many good memories because all of us are really close, actually. I mean, it's not, it's not just a bunch of colleagues who go to set, work together, and leave. We actually, most of us spend a lot of time together, um, off time. So it's just, it's always, it, for me, it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like I'm going to see my friends. You know what I mean? I think that's cool. Yeah, I think um, it was that party scene. <laughs> it was so much fun. I mean, it was like, well, you can't even compare that with anything else. Screw friends. <laughs> You're going to die alone. <laughs> With alcoholic champagne, I'm happy. <laughs> so, uh, last question right there. Hi, so it seems like you guys really are enjoying your characters, which is great, but I want to know what were your initial reactions upon realizing that you had been cast as Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle? I freaked out. <laughs> because I had, they didn't, I did my final audition, and then it was maybe, I think I waited a week or so to get the results. And at the time I was going to normal school, I was a freshman in high school. And you know, I loved my school, but when you're waiting for word that you did or didn't get a job, and you're at school all day, it's pretty terrifying, you know? So I was, I finally went, and once I found out, I just start. I didn't, I don't even remember, I just froze, I think, because I didn't know what to do, because I had never gotten a job before. <laughs> so, yeah, how depressing is that? Um, so, I was just excited, and frozen, and, I mean, Star, you have anything to say? Yeah, what about you? Um, it was kind of, uh, uh, it was a lot of feelings they, I, I'd been, I'd been auditioning for a while, and then um, I tested like three times in a week, and then um, they made me wait like two months because what? some, some stuff, yeah, like they don't, yeah, it was, it was a long thing. But when I finally found out that I got, because I was like on the line for a long time, and uh, when I finally found out that I got it, it was just kind of more relief than anything because they. Yeah put me through a very hellish kind of audition process. Um, but, uh, but I remember where I was. They, they, my mom picked me up from school, and she was like, okay, they called today, it's official, you got it. And I was like, okay, great. Um, <laughs> and then she's like, okay, we're flying to New York tomorrow. Fantastic, yeah. It literally happened like that, so. Dang. My mom knew when she picked me up. Girl, I feel you. <laughs> my mom picked me up. And, she, and I was like, did we find out yet? Did we find out yet? No, no, we're going to go to Holly's right now, though. That's my manager's name. So I, I get to my manager's house, and I find out that they knew since 9 that morning that I got the job. They purposely waited till I was done with school to tell me. Like, you're not, you couldn't tell me when I was on lunch break just, like, pacing, just wondering if I got it, that I got it? They knew the entire time, and they didn't tell me. I felt like Selena Kyle in that episode when she found out that Bruce knew the entire time that her mom was scamming her. Oh, yeah. I felt like that. <laughs> Always comes back to Gotham. <laughs> Look, what a way to end a panel. Um, <laughs> are you guys going to be at the, the con for the rest of the weekend? Yeah. yeah. So everyone go see them, get some autographs, get some photos. Give it up one more time for Cameron and David.